Welcome to my fourth class about deep policy search. This class is dedicated to explaining the soft actor critic algorithm, which is at the moment one of the state of the art algorithms in deep reinforcement learning. Before explaining SAC, I have to provide a quick reminder about the twin delayed deep deterministic algorithm or TD3. Okay. Uh, the idea is that, as I mentioned in my class about DDPG that you can also find on YouTube, there is some overestimation bias in the critique in DDPG. As you can see, for instance, in this curve, here the, the values in the critique network are going too high with respect to the expected values, which in fact should converge to that particular value. And this overestimation, overestimation bias uh, slows down the convergence of actor critic methods and it has to be um, dealt with. So in TD3 what they do is that they have two critics and each time they need the value in a critic, in fact they will consider the mean between the two values and this prevents overestimation and empirically the authors have shown that using these two critics uh, improves much the convergence of a DDPG-like algorithm. Besides, in uh, TD3, they give a justification for having also a target actor, which is that, in fact, you need a slow update of the policy uh, if you want it to converge. And this is related to the fact that in TRPO and PPO, as I just explained, you should, not, you should not move too far away from the current policy because you are using a gradient with respect to that previous policy. Okay, so that's TD3, and the idea is to, uh, to use two critiques and to take the mean. Now let's, sw uh, let's switch to soft actor critique. <coughs> so soft actor critique is also an actor critique method, similar to DDPG and TD3. Okay. Uh, in the name, soft means entropy regularized. So this is an actor critique algorithm with some entropy regularization uh, term. Uh, that plays an important role in the quality of the convergence of the algorithms. Um, one point is that soft actor critique pretends to be an off-policy algorithm. Actually, it can use a replay buffer, which is an important criterion, but we still need to check that it's really off-policy because with DDPG, we have seen that if the uh, behavior policy is too far away from the current policy, then uh, DDPG might diverge. And this kind of uh, experimental confirmation needs to be performed on soft actor critique to make sure that it also uh, converges whatever the behavior policy. So uh, soft actor critique uses a replay buffer, which also makes it very similar to DDPG and TD3. And this is very good because it improves the sample efficiency al of the algorithm. As we will see soon, this is quite related to TRPO and PPO, but just by using a replay buffer and having an actor critic approach with a stochastic actor, you get the best of both worlds between DDPG from one side and TRPO PPO from the other side. Um, the point with the entropy regularization uh, term is that if your policy favors uh, a large entropy, it favors exploration. So it allows you to um, converge to a better optimum that if you don't as d use this entropy regularization term, uh, in which case you might get stuck very quickly into a local uh, minimum. Okay. And using entropy regularization, uh, was previously studied in the soft Q-learning algorithm from the same authors and in preview in several other uh, papers. Uh, entropy regularization is a very um, important topic at the moment in deep reinforcement learning. Uh, one point that I must mention before going into the details also is that in fact there are some implementation of SAC where you can use a deterministic actor instead of a stochastic one. And if you use a deterministic actor, in fact, um, soft actor critique uh, bec becomes exactly uh, FID3 because this removes the entropy regularization term and you get exactly the same equation as in FID3. Okay. Uh, also, I must mention that if you look closely at the available papers on internet, in fact, there are three successive versions. And I will present to you those three versions uh, the last one, of course, being the most uh, efficient. 
So let's, let's first uh, focus on the way to uh, update the critic. So here, this is a soft critic update because the critic is entropy regularized. So in the first two versions of the soft, uh, soft actor critic paper, uh, they are using a value function network. So they have this network which provides the value of being in a state given the state. Okay, and they have another network which provides the Q function. So if you are in a state and you perform a particular action, what is the value of performing that action in that state? So that this, this one is similar to the one that you get in DDPG. Okay, so in the first version, you had two uh, such uh, networks, and you so you need two uh, gradient method, the gradient descent methods to update these networks. So this is the formula to update the value function network, okay? And this is, in fact, completely similar to standard uh, gradient descent techniques on value function networks, but here you add the entropy regularization term, okay? That's what you get when you uh, perform the maths, okay? Uh, and to update the Q function, okay, you also get a formula which is similar to what you get in other um, uh, gradient descent techniques for the Q functions, but here they uh, use a little trick which consists in uh, having the Q function parameters uh, use an exponentially, exponentially moving average so as to stabilize the training of this particular network. Yeah. I won't go into the detail, but uh, okay. Okay, uh, I have also put this pluses here in red, because in some versions of the, the paper, the soft actor critic paper, uh, you can find a minus, which is just a, a typo. Now, what about the free version? So in the first version, you had those two networks. In the second version, they use the TD3 double critic trick. So instead of just having one Q function, they have two Q functions, and they will take the mean both to update the value function and to update the, the policy parameters. So now you have three critic networks, okay? And the third version, which is the one from uh, 2019, they remove the value function and they use also use target networks. So you have, as in FD3, four critic networks, um, which are the, di the two different uh, critic networks that you use to get the mean and the, the corresponding target networks. Okay. And finally, in this last version, they also provide a way to anneal the entropy regularization term. In fact, here you have an alpha coefficient in, in front of the entropy regularization term, and they provide a way to um, tune this alpha parameter. So again, the update equation for that particular architecture is the following, where Q uh, theta bar is the target critic and not the standard critic. Again, I won't go into the details. You can have a look at the paper to, to understand this, but this is standard uh, mathematical derivation of uh, the gradient of the, this network. <coughs> so this was about the critic. Now what about the actor? To understand how you update the actor, we will have to go through a small um, uh, investigation of the reparametrization trick. Okay, so the paper Soft Actor Critic starts by studying soft policy iteration, which is uh, entropy regularized policy iteration in the tabular case, and they show mathematically some formula to perform this uh, soft policy iteration. And finally, they end up with the idea that policy parameters can be learned by minimizing the expected KL divergence, which is expressed here, uh, where here alpha is again the coefficient of the entropy regularization term. I won't go into the detail. And then by just rewriting the uh, kullback liber divergence, you can transform this formula into this one, where in fact uh, you are having an expectation over the state corresponding to uh, your set of trajectories, and then an expectation over your actions corresponding to your current policy. And then you have this term, which corresponds to, uh, in fact, re-expressing the Kyle divergence, which takes a log, so the exponential disappears. And you just ignore this term because the this dash does not change anything into the gradient, and you multiply by alpha. I, again, I don't give you the mathematical details, but uh, it's easy to derive this 
uh, with a piece of paper uh, if you need uh, to do so. So now what we want is to compute this particular gradient, the gradient of this particular equation. And we will focus on computing the gradient of the inside uh, expectation. Actually, there are two ways to compute this gradient. One consists in using the standard likelihood ratio methods that I uh, explained into the second class of this policy search uh, series of classes. And the other one is using the reparametrization repar trick. And I will explain this to you in the next slide, but the important point is that if you use the reparametrization trick, you get a smaller variance, and I will just tell you why. So, we need to compute the gradient over uh, phi of this term, which was present in the previous equation. Okay. In the standard likelihood ratio method, you will sample these actions corresponding to this policy. You need to reorganize to introduce the gradient into the expectation, and you finally you obtain something with, uh, with the log. Uh, okay, I don't go into the detail, but the point is that this term here is not function of the parameter phi, okay? So it does not di depend directly on phi. Just no gradient of that with respect to phi appear in the equation, okay? Um, okay, that's the point. A different way to perform this computation, which is the, the, which is the policy reparametrization trick, consists in saying that, in fact, the action can be rewritten as some uh, using some uh, Gaussian, okay? So <coughs> here mu of phi of st is the mean action, and here you have epsilon times some variance, where epsilon itself uh, is uh, taken for a Gaussian, okay? So instead of sampling the action here, we now sample the value of epsilon. This is the reparametrization trick. We change the parameter that we are sampling. Here we were sampling this, and now we are sampling that. Okay, and by doing so, this changes um, where here what's the function of phi or not? Because here, as you see, I'll, the, the action is function of phi because I am using a network parameterized with phi uh, to get this action. So now the Q value of ST80 becomes the Q value of ST and mu phi of ST plus uh, epsilon T sigma of ST. There, there should be a sigma phi here, sorry, my mistake. Okay, so what, what you can see is no, if you want to compute the gradient of this term, no, this gradient is a function of phi, so you will have a, a gradient term that will appear. And uh, the fact that the gradient is used to compute this term makes it that you have a smaller variance when you compute the overall uh, equation. This is quite explained in this particular video from John Schulman. Again, this comes from the DPRL bootcamp, and you can switch directly to the eighth minute to, to get the explanation of that. Okay, so we can use this policy reparametrization trick, so we need to reformulate the action this way. So what do we do in practice? So we get an actor with that takes the state at his input, and instead of outputting directly the action, it outputs the mean action and some variance. And finally, you draw some epsilon according to some Gaussian, and you take the action is the mean plus epsilon times the variance. Okay. And um, just by adding this uh, reparametrization trick, you can now compute the gradient uh, over the actor. Uh, okay, so I, I, I add the, the formula here with the expectation over ST and the expectation over AT. And now the, this has been turned into an expectation over Epsilon, where Epsilon is, uh, comes according to this uh, unit Gaussian. Okay, and here you can see that you have Q uh, theta of st and function phi, that's the function phi corresponding to, to, to the neural network of epsilon t and st. Okay. Finally, you can uh, compute the gradient with respect to phi of that particular formula, and this gives you this, which is uh, what is used in uh, soft actor critique. Okay. This was quite mathematical, but you need to understand that reparametrization trick if you want to understand how you end up with this particular equation. 
So finally, once you have all these components, you can just uh, use them as you would use a TD3 or uh, DDPG, but now you have a stochastic actor. Okay. And in the, paper, in the original papers, uh, where they present soft actor critique, they show that they have a b much better performance on standard Mijoko benchmarks with continuous actions. That's the violet line that you should have a look at. Okay. Th there is only on Swimmer that it's not the best performing, but uh, okay, Swimmer is a very particular case where deep reinforcement learning techniques are much less efficient than evolutionary ones and I still need to investigate why this is the case, but this is probably a question of deceptive gradient. Uh, okay. So finally, soft actor critique is a state-of-the-art algorithm, and as I told you, soft actor critique with a deterministic policy is very, very close to DDPG and TD3, so soft actor critique can be seen as the missing link between the PPO family and the DDPG family. One point is that uh, it's not so easy to use the available implementations based on TensorFlow. There are few implementations based on PyTorch. And actually, you can use this one, which is quite uh, efficient if, if you want to. I won't explain to you how you anneal the alpha parameter that corresponds to the anthropocularization. This is explained in the last version of the SAC paper, but this is quite complex. So that would be too long to explain in this class. No, to summarize something about TRPO, PPO, SAC, soft actor critique, etc. Yeah, sorry, I'm saying SAC, this, this would be the French uh, name, but that, that means soft actor critique. Uh, yeah, so there are different ways to estimate the critique. One is you get a, p a policy, you get a lot of data from that policy, then you compute a new critique, from that new critique you get a new policy, and so on. That, that's the... Uh, vision where you have a transient critique that you have to recompute after each batch of sampling. Okay? And that's quite what TRPO does. And you have the persistent critique view, where in fact you have a previous critique and you just update the critique given some additional data. And given the new critique, you get the new policy. And that's most of the algorithms like DDPG, uh, PPO itself is that way rather, and uh, of, to, of course soft actor critique. Okay. Uh, the idea is that in the persistent critic approach, you can reuse the same data several times to update the critic. So in general, this is more sample efficient. Okay. Uh, so TRPO uses more Monte Carlo, and uh, PPO uses a persistent critic, SAC also, and so it's more sample efficient, it's step-based, and it's said to be of policy, and this has to be checked. So what I wanted to stress with this previous slide is in fact that there is a continuum between the transient critique and persistent critique approaches because for instance if you are using the n-step return uh, trick that allows you to deal with the bias variance uh, issue uh, or trade-off, in fact if you are using n very large you will go towards transient critique and if you are using n very small you are more uh, towards persistent. So that's it for those uh, algorithms, and now I will just give you in the next class a general overview of uh, what I have not covered in those uh, deep le reinforcement learning algorithms and some more general perspective. Thank you for listening. <laughs>